we're going to go through our predictions of the Premier League season upcoming. Mm-hmm. Um, got my list here. Yeah. So, obviously, I've got the categories and then I've got the table. I shouldn't have actually done a full table. I've only done the top six and the relegation. Okay. Where do you reckon we start? With the um, categories or the... Should we... Top, we'll run table, through our... Table. Uh, we'll run through our table first, I okay. think. Okay. All right. We'll start from 20th. Okay. Because then we can reveal first... Last. Yeah. Um, yeah. Who have you got 20th? Last place, I think Bournemouth, to be honest. Really? Yeah. Um, wow. Who have they signed? So Alex Scott, Milos Kerkesh. Um, there we go, man. Like, they made, um, they signed um, Castro Villi as well from Fiorentina today. Great. Made some great signings. You're going to war for 38 games, 38 weeks of the year. Them guys. Don't know, man. I've got them. 20th. Bottom. Yeah. You'll be shocked where I have them. Okay, fair enough. Where have you got? Who have you got last? Sheffield United. Yeah. They've oh, just, it's an obvious one, isn't it? Yeah, I know, but they've just lost Ilya Minjai, um, mm, apparently true. replacing him with Chubra Akpom, who scored goals in the championship last year, but as a number 10. Bringing mm. him in to play striker. Not scored goals at this level before. 26 and has only had one really good season. Yeah. Um. So... Yeah, and I just think the overall quality of their team. I mean, uh, Ahmed Hodjic is a great player and Sander Burge is good as well. Mm. But outside of that, I don't think their team's good enough. And I think the team, a, t- a team who I've got above them have a factor about them where they're an unknown. Whereas Sheffield United don't have that unknown factor because they've been here before recently. Yeah. So I think the first season they came up, they had the unknown factor. That's why they did so well. Yeah. But now... People have been to Bramble Lane. People know what it's like. People, you know, it's not yeah, unique yeah. now. Nah, I do agree. Um, that is true. Yeah, Sheffield United. Good performance against Spurs last season in the FA Cup. Mm. But they're a solid team. I don't think. I don't think they're going to get slapped. Mm. But I just can't see them when the games are nil nil or they're losing one nil. I can't see them getting the points yeah. necessary to, um, yeah, to to stay up. Mm. Whereas I, f- I can see some of the teams above them nicking some one nils at home. Yeah. I can't see that with Sheffield United. Nineteenth place. Um, I might change my mind here. To be honest, I've, I've actually put Burnley, but really, yeah, because uh, this this is gonna sound like I wear this is gonna sound like such a casual take, but open expansive football with. I hear you. Bad, I do not hear as good quality players. I completely I hear you. I don't think it's a recipe for safety. I had this debate. To be honest, I had this debate the other day with a couple man. We was having a few drinks, mm. and I was saying, um, if if I'm a top six team, mm. I'd rather play Burnley than Luton or Sheffield yeah, United. Exactly. Because you know they're going to come and try and play football, and you yeah. can pick them apart. Yeah. Whereas those other teams are going to be resilient. Mm. Um, so I hear you. Yeah. I do think. The football they play as a collective will be better against the smaller sides so they'll pick up points. Yeah. But unlike Sheffield United and unlike a couple of other teams, I do think they're going to get slapped 4 5 0 a couple of times. Yeah, that's what I think as well. Wouldn't have happened before when they had that edge. But no, yeah, it wouldn't. Who have you got 19 then? I've got Wolves. Oh. No goals in that team. Yeah. Got some nice midfielders, but mm. they couldn't score goals last year and now they've lost Jimenez as well. Yeah. Um, and Nunez, uh, Neves, sorry, lost their best player, mm. um, which is going to be a huge loss to them. Haven't replaced him. Yeah. Um, they gave Luton Ryan Giles, who was one of their best young talents. They let him go basically for five million pittance, yeah. and then apparently going to replace him with Aaron Cresswell because that's how broke they are. For West Ham. Yeah. It's not the worst. But he's fair, he's like thirty four years old, and they're letting a twenty three year old go to Luton. Yeah. Who's was one of the best players in the championship last year to for to replace him with a thirty four year old? It's not. I, an ins- I don't think that's. A, it's not an inspiring yeah. signing for me. As an outsider, I'll say Kev Creswell's a better player though. I mean, I don't I'm, I look. I'm aware. I, I've, I've not really watched that much of Giles, but I disagree. Yes, um, with Wolves, I think I think it will start off sticky for them. I think they'll set manager and they'll, they'll, they'll be all right again. They'll set. They think they'll. Do you think they can get a better manager than Lopetegui though? Um, but it's not. Some sometimes it's just a refresh thing that's needed. Yeah, I hear you. And maybe they need more of a traditional yeah. coach to keep them up. But I just don't, I don't think there's goals in that team. They've lost Nathan Collins as well, who was one of their yeah. better centre backs. 
um, to, to Brentford. I just think it's bad signs when you're selling all your good young players and mm. replacing them with older players. And also, Lopetegui's come out a couple times now and basically... He basically said after the game, when Luton played them yesterday, mm. it was 0-0 um, at, at Molyneux. And he basically came out and said, we're fucked, essentially. Yeah. Uh, he no. came out and said, we don't have goals in our team. Yeah. Um, and we need goals in our team. They ain't got goals, to be fair. They don't have I any goals. I think they've got thingy coming back. Fabio Silva, he's, he's garbage. Yeah. But oh, they've lost They've lost Neves as well. Still got Moutinho or no? No, Moutinho's gone. Oh, right. Neves is gone. So who's, who's going to play midfield for them next year? Because uh, they've got their non-crane. Nunez. Mateusz oh, yeah. Nunez. Good player. Good player, yeah. Um, they've got some, some guy called Traore. Okay. Um, And then... Yeah, I, I actually didn't I cons- quite consider that. To yeah, be fair. I'm worried about that. That Moutinho and Neves pivot was solid. Yeah, I'm worried about them. Yeah, I, I am now. He said that actually. Signed um, Matt Doherty though. Or resigned him? Yeah. <laughs> don't know, man. I think he's he's had his time. Yeah. Um, and then 18th. This is the year Everton Football Club get relegated from the Ooh, Premier League. He's got him staying up. This is the year, he's man. He's got the team who I've got staying up, staying up as well. Yeah. You think Everton? Everton got to go this year. Like I hear that. I do hear that. You'd be shocked at where I have them. <laughs> you're going to have them quite high up. Yeah. Everton got some... It's weird, like, they've got Iwobi as the core rays, these little solid players, I think, but it's not enough. Man. Yeah, I don't think they'll go down with Sean Dyche's manager. I think it's different to Burnley because they've actually got quality. Sean Dyche kept Burnley up for years with very minimal quality, and I do think Everton have... But Dyche was tailored for that Burnley job. Man. He's tailored, he, I think he's tailored for this Everton job. Yeah. I think big if, if they can keep um, Calvert-Lewin fit, mm. then they stay up. Dan Juma's a good signing. True. Um, they've signed uh, a young striker from Sporting Lisbon as well, yeah. 19. Um, so, yeah, I mean, they've got some good players. Um, Dwight McNeil had a good end to the season last year. Mm. Iwobi had a good season. Yeah. Um, Garner looked solid at right back for England under, uh, under 21s and back in the last Did season. They got him again? Yeah. Oh. Okay. Yeah. It, they, permanent it, was, it was permanent, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. But he was playing at right back. Uh, and then. How much was he? I think he was only like seven million. Oh, um, and then Ashley Young had some experience mm. that they're losing with not having Coleman for a year with his injury. Yeah, they renewed his contract even though he tore his ACL. Yeah, which is loyal from them, I guess. But true. Um, you got eighteen. I got Fulham. Okay. Uh, Mitro said he's never playing for him again. Yeah. Whether or not I believe him, if that side of move doesn't go through, what's he going to do? He's not going to sit on the bench, is he? Yeah. At Fulham. Um, Although the uh, people from the Balkans are very proud people, so yeah. it wouldn't surprise me if he is a man of his word. Yeah. Um, Lost Solomon. Mm. Williams off to Saudi now as well. Yeah. Um, and they've replaced. That's crazy, by the way. William going to Saudi. Yeah, he signed a contract 10 days ago yeah. and he's now going to Saudi. Such a William thing as well. Yeah. Um, I mean, Calvin Bassey's a decent sign in. Yeah. Um, I, I actually hear that for them 18th yeah I just think I think Silva will, will walk mm. um, I think he's one of them guys who when the he's when the sip shinks the rats leave first and we've seen him do it at Watford mm. um, we've seen him do it at other clubs as well yeah. I just think um, as soon as he smells that maybe perhaps they're not going to be as good as they were last year I think he'll jump ship yeah that's fair and Fair another enough. team who don't have goals. They don't score a lot of goals. Yeah. So we've both got Luton to stay up. Yeah, I've got, them seven, I've got us 17th though. Purely out of hope, I can't lie. Because I just think... Yeah. Bro, man's named Bournemouth, Burnley, Everton to go down. I don't think Bournemouth go down. Yeah. We didn't have any of the top... We had completely different with three, actually. Yeah, we did. So you got Sheffield United staying up as well? Yeah. Really? Sheffield United. I'd love if, if we both stayed up. I'd love if Luton and Sheffield United both stayed up. Can't I- see it. I'm going off um, just like, it's, it's never it's never it's never the obvious ones it's not down. no one thought Southampton would go down yeah, no exactly. one thought Leeds would go down exactly no one thought Leicester would go down exactly so that's kind of the approach I've gone here yeah that's why I've gone Wolves and Fulham true Wolves are here Fulham is a bit more like inter- predictable words here mm. but yeah Luton's purely out of hope um I think... Who's going to score goals for Luton? Carl Morris. In the Prem. 
Yeah, I don't mm. I don't think we're going to score many goals. Yeah. But I think at home we'll keep a lot of clean sheets. Mm. Um, when I was talking about Sheffield United not being able to get the one nils and the nil nils, I think we'll be able to do that. I think there'll be a couple of games. For instance, Brighton first game of the season. Mm. I can see us getting slapped, mm. but I can see us drawing nil nil as well. Um, mm. We didn't concede many goals last year. Mm. We've addressed areas that we didn't have last year. Yeah. Um, so we've got a better goalkeeper now in Kaminsky. Horvath, even though Horvath did a fine job last year, he done okay. Yeah. Um, Chong, last year we didn't have a, a player who could dribble. Mm. Chong does that. Um, Nakamba, obviously, retaining him was huge. The best player I've seen in a Luton shirt, personally, wow. um, in terms of his impact. Yeah. Um, Kabore on loan from City. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, and I mean, I do think another striker will come in. There's been links to Josh King. I'm not sure how I feel about that. Mm. But I do think... We're going to score a lot of goals from set pieces. We're going to be very solid from set pieces. Mm. Not many teams are going to score against us from set pieces, but we'll score against a lot of teams against set pieces. And I, I can see a team like an Arsenal or United or a Spurs come into Kenilworth Road mm. and us just lumping the ball on top of Onana or Ramsdale and then just not being able to handle it. Maybe. I can see that. Are they going to come with 4-4-2 four, four, next year? Nah, 5-3-2. Five, five, oh, I don't know, man. I think... Two wing backs. Past, past to death. Maybe. Uh, I, I hope not. I hope not. Actually. Maybe. And that's why I've I've got them not in the relegations. So. Yeah, I've got seventy, and that's purely on home form. Yeah. Um. Even though our away form was actually better than our home form last year, surprisingly. Mm. But it's different in the Premier League because no one's gonna like you, you can't imagine Haaland or like a Rashford go into the Kenilworth Road and it being a full packed out house we've been there when it's been electric before Yeah, I've been there when it's been shit before don't get me wrong but I've been there when it's been electric and um, it's, a, it's a scary place bro when it's when it's an, especially for a night game yeah. when it's a Tuesday night or a Wednesday night and it's rocking yeah. it's a scary place and Sunderland found that out as well I mean Ahmad couldn't like he was one of the best players in the championship last year yeah. he just crumbled at mm. Kenilworth Road because he just couldn't it was a different experience for him that he'd never experienced yeah uh, maybe for more experienced teams Man City's will be good but I think for slightly younger teams who maybe have players who haven't played there before like United's Arsenal's um, even Chelsea's as well it's going to be a difficult place although Chelsea have played there last year so yeah we'll see man um, I've got a top six you want to go through the rest of your yeah. 17th, 10th. So I've got um, Luton 17th, Forest 16th, yeah. Brentford 15th. Wow. Um, no Ivan Tony's yeah. really huge. Um, Burnley 14th. Okay. West Ham 13th. Mm. But. West Ham could be. Could be in trouble. Yeah. Um, Palace 12th. Everton 11th. 11th? Yeah. Bournemouth 10th. Watch out for them. Milos Kerkes. Top 10 finish. Yeah. Milos yeah, Kerkes. 14th last year, I think. Or 15th. Yeah, 15th. Good season. Milos Kerkes, baller at left back from yeah. AZ Alkmaar. Um, Alex Scott. Bro, this guy is next up. Yeah. In, he's going to be, he's going to get 60 England caps. 6-0. Yeah. Wow. He is so good. Yeah. He can turn. Uh, he's big enough to deal with the physicality of the Premier League. I think he's going to be a 60, 70 million pound player in a few years. Damn. I think, I think a top six team will, will take that that price in him. United, if they couldn't get Mount, this is from what I was hearing, mm. were going to go for, for him. Wow. Um, so, he's a very similar player to Mount, actually, uh, yeah. but plays a little bit deeper. Yeah. Um, watch out for him. Um, Oratara, mm. great player. Gibrani that they have is a good player as well. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think they'll come 10th. Um, I think Brighton 9th. Um, I think with Europe, they're going to focus on that. Mm. It's going to be a struggle for them. Yeah. Um, and they've lost McAllister, potentially losing Casado. Yeah. Um, and obviously Colwell as well. Yeah. I've got Newcastle eighth. Again, Champions League is going to be a bit too much for them. Although I like the business they've done. I like Barnes. I like uh, Tonali. And I like Livermento. I think that's three quality players have added. Uh, Spurs seventh. Right. Um, that's on the assumption that Kane leaves. Um, and the reason being is they just haven't, I don't know, they're just a bit meh with Spurs at the moment. I like yeah. Andrew as a coach. Yeah, they've got a couple of nice signings. Madison yeah. and Simon. Madison. They're signing Van de Ven as well now, apparently. Mickey Van de Ven okay. from Wolfsburg. Um, Villa sixth. Mm. I think they'll win the Conference League. Emery's a specialist in the Europa competitions. Yeah. So who's your sixth? Uh, yeah, sixth. I'm going to change this right now to Liverpool. 
I had Chelsea, but I'm going to change Liverpool it. Liverpool six? Yeah, I think Ooh. Liverpool six, man. That midfield reshuffle, I don't know how it's going to go. I hear that, you know. Like, the physicality they've lost in that midfield yeah, and replaced it with, yeah. I can't actually see where Shabosh life fits in that midfield, weirdly enough. They can get cut open, even with Lavia, if they sign them, yeah. they will get cut, especially they, yeah. bringing Trent into midfield. I mean, mm. on the ball, it's great, but he's going to get caught in no man's land so much. That's what I think. The defence is still great. Like, they've still got top players on paper, but I think they're going to have a lot of basketball match games. They will. They already had a few in pre-season. Yeah. And they'll slap a couple of teams up. I think up. they're declining a bit as well. They'll probably slap United at Anfield yeah, again, though. Probably. <laughs> I don't think Salah gets 19 goals like next season. I think, you don't he think? Get, I think he gets a little bit less. Then I don't know who's going to fill in the output that Mane's left still. I agree. There's a lot of question marks. It's, yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot of things where if they go well, they can go very well. Like if Darwin starts scoring the goals, we yeah. know he can score, then great. Um, so, like, again... What's quite, that's, any idea what the best 11 is for Liverpool I'm not really sure especially when it comes to the front line yeah I'm not sure man and I think there's you know going back to the Trent thing mm. if you get like a, a Rashford or a Martinelli who do like the runs in behind yeah and Trent's in midfield yeah I know Konate is great yeah. but he's going to have to mark two players at once no yeah. one can do that mm. so it's going to be costly for them I think they should just sign a proper DM mm. and forget the whole Trent in midfield thing yeah. Let him come into there in possession. Mm. But just keep, you know, you don't have to play Trent midfield. I don't think it's, mm. I think it's ideal. And then McAllister, I like him. Yeah. But again, he's not like a combative midfielder. He's technical. Yeah. And then Shobojlai, that as a midfield three kind of stinks. You want Lavia and them two? No, um, Trent projected. and them two. Oh, you don't think it'll, don't think it'll be... Projected. Well, I think Lavia will play there if he signs. Yeah. If he signs. I think he will. Um, okay, so you've got you've got Liverpool sixth. Yeah, uh, okay. and they're in Europa League as well. I'm going to use that cliche. I think that's going to be a bit annoying for them as well. The I don't think they'll Sundays. care about that though. Actually, no, they've got European heritage. They will care about that. Yeah. Um, who you got six? Villa. Oh yeah, Villa. Yeah, you did see. Um, yeah. Good signings in mm-hmm. Torres and Diaby. Yeah. Uh, fifth place. I'm just going to change that now. Okay. I got Liverpool in fifth. Fifth place, I got Brighton. Okay. Brighton fifth because I actually don't think much has changed from last season in terms of signs. I don't think there's a team below them mm. who've really strengthened to the point I'm like, Brighton are going to fall off so much. And they've made good signs themselves. They always they've, make good um, signings, I don't exactly know. Exactly. The Hood and... Um, Milner. Pedro and Milner. Pedro's great signing. Yeah. Signed Igor as well. Sounds yeah. jokes. <laughs> it's a left footed <laughs> centre back. <laughs> so, I don't know. They're... That game against the, the, I saw the Emirates from them last season was unbelievable. To be fair, like they've got a lot of options the in way that they team. Were building up, and um, there's a player I want to talk on in my pre- category predictions later. He plays for Brighton, who I think is gonna have a great season. Okay. Um, who you got fifth? I got Liverpool fifth. Okay. I did have them fourth, but I've changed them just now with around yeah with a team. Mm. Yeah, I've got them fifth. Yeah, first I got Newcastle. Fourth? I've got Chelsea fourth. Wow. And we had a debate with this one. Newcastle or Chelsea. I just think Newcastle got 70 odd points last year. Best defensive record in the Prem. I think they had the least, joint least losses in the Prem as well. I don't see how that's going to change that drastically. I know they've got Champions League next year as well. But, like, they didn't get fourth on the third on the fluke thing. Fourth on the fluke thing last year. They have, they have top players, man. They do, but everyone would yeah. have Bruno. Wilson, a lot of teams have Isak as well. Joe Linton these times as well. Unbelievable. Mm. Um, and that they, rem- they remind me a lot of Simeone's Atletico Madrid. Yeah. Where they've got like players that. who can play. Mm. Atletico have always had players who can play, but they're mm. very rough. Um, maybe the new rules with extra time, added time. I don't know if you've seen them. No. It's going to be World Cup style at a time to oh, combat okay. time wasting. Oh, okay, yeah. uh, and Newcastle were one of the teams with the lowest amount of ball, uh, ball in play time in the league. Mm. So that could affect them. Yeah, potentially. But Chelsea came five. I don't think you can take much from that season because this just Chelsea. They've always done stuff like that. But they've been slowly declining though, I think. I um, think Poch is the right coach for a young team to, to, de- to mould and develop. I think it's a lot of stocks being put in. Poch then, to be fair, to expect him to overturn that 
in the season. I've always rated Poch. For for um like a, a mid team, mm. like a team who's almost elite but not quite elite. Yeah, he's I think the, he's the ideal coach yeah. for that. But not for like a elite PSG, Real Madrid, Man City, Man yeah. United, Arsenal even. I don't think he's maybe Arsenal. Yeah. But I don't think he's that type of uh coach. But I think for a, a team who's in and around the fourth and pushing them up to to Champions League places. Yeah. I think he's the ideal coach. And I think they've got a lot of quality in that team. Yeah. Nah, they, I, I actually don't know, man. The defence is really good, I think. Yeah, the defence is solid. And the, I think the forward line's got options. I think yeah. Nkunku's... The forward line could be really good. The, it could be really good. Um, apparently, they want to sign Vlahovic as well. But yeah, apparently, he's saying he doesn't want to leave Juventus. Yeah. They don't want him either, Chelsea. But Chelsea want to get rid of Lukaku, but... Yeah. It's a weird one. Um, okay. Uh, you got Chelsea in fourth. Yep. I can't believe I put this in third. I've got Arsenal. Really? I've got a funny feeling about next year. Um, I'm also doing a bit of psychology. I hope I'm just wrong. But I think Jack is a big loss. And I can't lie. Um, I'm that guy, man. I'll tell you, I don't know his best 11 at the moment. True. And last season, he did at this point. I know he's only preseason games, but we came... Unbelievable preseason last season. Mm. Unbelievable start to season last season. Won won nine and ten. Then by nineteen games, we won sixteen. Mm. I don't know, man. I've just got a funny Jesus injury as well. It's, it's not feeling smooth sailing. Just, um, just in mind. In a weird way, I think although we're straight from the squad, it, it might come with selection headaches for so, Arteta. Like, yeah, who's he gonna play? Timber or Ben White? Like, I don't know, man. I just missed mm. that. I, I, I missed the eleven we had last season, bro. I think that was. That was just the right 11. I You've got know. to evolve. You have to evolve. Every but like, we're evolving in positions. I don't feel like we need, we actually need evolving in. I don't think, um, our proposed midfield for next season is worse than last season for Where me. would you have evolved that team? Forwards. Like, I would have idea oh, Victor Ossie, ideally. But you can't get that. But does that, do you not lose something with Jesus? With Jesus. Yeah, but City lost something with Jesus as well. I think Aussie men. But City had the players where they could afford to. They had Swiss Army knives like Gundogan, like Bernardo. <laughs> yeah. It's the, it's the ideal. I, I hope I'm right, yeah. man. Um, but I've just, I don't know. I don't feel. I think midfield is going to be an interesting one next year. Mm. I, I, I don't think the plan is to play party and rice together, but I think he's going to do it. I think it, I think he will. But I don't think that's the plan because he said he wanted to. Sit, Sell party and now party stay in. Um, I don't know. I actually have hopes for have a left left centre mid, but I see too much rotation. Champions League possibly as well being a factor for us. I've just got a weird. I don't feel as confident as I did this stage last season. When I was watching Arsenal, so that's weird. I'm humbly putting them third. Okay, you. I'm humbly putting Man United third. Fair enough. But I think they'll be a lot closer to mm. the top two than what they were last year. Yeah. I think they'll get about 75, 80 points. Mm. I think they'll make a long stretch in the Champions League and I think they'll compete for the two domestic cups again. Yeah. And I think we'll see improvement. Mm. Um, do you know what, though? I did have Man City third. Oh, wow. Um, but I went too bold and I went too bold with the World Cup stuff. And yeah. it almost happened and it didn't. Yeah. But I got laughed at because it didn't happen. Yeah. Because when you say something crazy and it doesn't happen, people think you're crazy. But then yeah, when you say something exactly. crazy and it does happen, people are like, what a fucking genius. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I'm not brave enough to do that this time around. Yeah. Um, so I think United second, uh, third, sorry. Yeah. Wouldn't surprise me if any of these top three teams win the league though. Yeah, fairs. In a weird way. Yeah, I hear that as well. Um, Annoyingly, I've got United second, man. Okay, I've got Man City Anno- second. So annoyingly. I don't think United are a better team than Arsenal on paper. Um, I just think that season's going to be a fun year for us. They probably have more match winners than Arsenal this year anyway. I don't think United are a better team than Arsenal on paper. Um, <laughs> Fairs. But I just refuse to give United praise. But I'm putting them <laughs> second. Okay. Um, I actually think Hoyland's going to be a great sign. So do I. So do That's I. what I'm worried about. In a weird way. Yeah. I'm worried he's going to be a massive difference maker. I also, I'm not an idiot. I realise United lost their first two games of the season last season. That's six points they could have potentially had. That would have had them at 81 points. Mm. They had things such as Casemiro out for the game against us. 
other things like that. Casemiro out for four games. Mm-hmm. In a weird way, in another world. They had the Ronaldo situation. In another world, they could have come second. Yeah. Because. Yeah. They, yeah, they and were, I feel like maybe that maybe this season that happens. I think we both finished quite a bit off City, though. Do you think? Yeah. So I've got Man City second. Yeah. Now the reason being, um, I seen um, Nobert. Do you know him? He went on. Um, I think he calls him Rambo, that Rambo guy. He mm-hmm. went on Sky Sports. He was talking about Man City's depth, and he mm-hmm. said Man City's depth in the last couple of years is is mm-hmm. the biggest myth in football. Yeah. They don't have that much depth. Mm-hmm. They have players who can play different positions. Mm. So you've got like a Bernardo Silva who can play six, eight, ten on the right, played left back last year at times. Mm. They had Rico Lewis who could play six, eight, right back. Walker who could play right back, centre back, Stones, centre back, DM, centre mid. Mm. Guys who can play everywhere. I've, Harlem was the only one who had a position really. Mm, mm, mm. Um, they've lost Morris. Mm. Huge experience to lose. Mm. They've lost their captain, Gundogan, who for me is sums up that depth perfectly. Mm. Six, eight, ten. Play striker if you want him to. Mm. Can play off Haaland. If you want him to stick him on the left or the right, he could probably do a job there as well. Yeah. Huge player to lose. Looking like they're going to lose Laporte now. Mm. That's what, three Premier League titles they've yeah. lost? Vardio, great potential. Yeah. But they're going to bring him into a place with Laporte. Yeah. Um, I can see... Bernardo will stay this year. Mm. But I can just see with the treble... Replacing Gundogan with Kovacic, mm. I just think they've lost a lot and they've already done a lot. So the motivation's not going to be as yeah, strong yeah, yeah, yeah. for them to do it again, yeah. especially without the guys who have done it before in Laporte, Mares and Gundogan. Yeah. Um, I, 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 I would love to agree, you know, but I just think Pep's going to find a way to re- re-motivate them. I mm. actually think Kovacic's probably going to become a baller. Yeah, um, he will, but not And they've got Haaland and... KDB and I think that's mm. just the ultimate difference to be honest mm. so yeah. you have City number one City one Arsenal United final up second and third I have I'm probably I'm probably going to put Arsenal second now to be fair I have Arsenal Football Club winning the league title I hope so I hope you're right um, I just think it reminds me of the clock trajectory yeah, I hope you're right. Where it just they got stronger and stronger year on year, and they had a couple of knockbacks. Mm. Liverpool obviously were in the lead for so long, and then lost the league to City, and then the next year won it. Mm. I think that Arsenal are going to do the same thing. Yeah. I just think with the young team, with adding um, someone like Rice, who's such a unique profile, mm. um, I think you've got Timber now. So if Saliba does get an injury, mm. you've got that depth there where you don't have to play Rapolding. Yeah. I do think you could do with another midfield player. I would say keep Partey this year and sign Lavia mm. and then give Lavia a year as a fringe player and then let Partey go next year um, because then you could play Partey and Rice. You've got variation and you've got yeah. what City have where you've got players who can play a lot of positions. Yeah. So you've got Havertz can play left centre mid, he can play off the striker, can play striker. Jesus can play along the wing, at striker. Yeah. Odegaard can play 8-10. Rice can play 6-8. Martinelli can play left striker. Yeah. Saka can play right left. You've got Timber who can play centre back, right back midfield. White can play centre back, right back midfield. Zinchenko's the same. You've got a lot of them Swiss Army knives that City have now. Yeah. So I think you've got the good blend of physicality, youth, and also that good blend of depth as well. I hope you're right. Like, and it's, it's, it is so logical to assume Arsenal got to win the Premier. We've got the best squad to be fair in terms of depth now I Premier. agree with you. you you've got the most depth in the Premier League now yeah and we've got players like Saka and Martinelli who are absolutely flying like when you when you said about the variation thing the players you, yeah Timber Gray can play these roles in Jenko. Swiss Army Knife yeah um, I've used that saying four times now <laughs> yeah I've, I've never heard it before today to be honest um, but I don't know I've just got with I think so oh, Harlan and KDB is genuinely the difference, man. You're always a bit of a pessimist with Arsenal, though. I'm, I'm usually positive. Last season, I thought we would, I genuinely thought we would come third. And that was when Liverpool and City were assumed as the best two. When Gary Neville was saying all that stuff, I was like, what are you on about? Like, have you not seen us playing? We're, we're unbelievable. Yeah, the last laugh in the end, kind of. I have been pessimistic this summer, to be fair. You have? I have, I have. Like, I haven't been like, oh, Rice mm. is going to fucking be the new Vieira. Yeah, you, um, you haven't. You're not... You're not a, you're not a top red. I wouldn't be a top red. But. You're not a top red. We've got some friends who are top reds. Yeah. But uh, I feel like you yeah. and Keelan have always been very levelled, especially... Keelan's a pessimist a lot of the time of Arsenal. Yeah, yeah, you're saying sell Saka. 
Yeah. <laughs> Get the 100 million for him. I remember yeah, that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just before we finish, couple categories. We yes. I'm not going to do all of them because we ain't got much time. Okay. Breakthrough star. Who are you saying? I've got Kobe Manu. Okay. At yeah. United. And I've also got um, Ahmad at um, Crystal Palace. Wow. Okay. Number 10. Good player. Fairs, yeah. What about got yourself? Julio and Caesar at Brighton. Yeah, I baller. Think. He's a baller, man. Yeah. Play anywhere in the front line. Outside the box, inside the box is a threat. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man, I think he's had a great season. Um, first man just sacked. It's between three for me. Mm. I've gone with Paul Heckenbottom from Sheffield United because okay. I think they'll start the season poorly and then they'll get sacked. Yeah. And they'll try and bring like a someone who has managed in the Prem before in and it won't work. Yeah. But... David Moyes is probably going to be the first manager sacked wow, okay. as well. That's one that I, f- I think could yeah. happen. Because I've got Everton to come in the relegation spots, I think Sean Dyche is going to get really? sacked. Really? Yeah, I haven't been too impressed with Sean Dyche so far, Everton. Like, he was supposed to make them mad solid and that. I don't think he really has. And Their home form was really good under him, though. Yeah, I guess so. I don't think they lost a game at home under him. I can see the fans getting a bit... It's a hostile place. Enough, but of the football. Now, yeah, it's a hostile place. That's just what I see. But I think Everton fans know where they're at, though. Yeah. I think they're smart. But Unlike Liverpool They're a fans. big club, though, so they're not going to win that. Are they, though? Yeah. Mm. But they would consider themselves a yeah. big Yeah. Um, True. And we'll go with... Fluff of the season. Kai Havertz. Kai Havertz. Because Arteta's going to try and left in the mid. It's not going to work. And you're going to play Partey and Rice... Uh, so he's just not going to get many minutes and yeah. for a player you signed for 70 million or whatever it was he's going to have to get minutes otherwise he's just not going to work yes I hope I'm wrong on Declan Rice have you? Yeah. I hear it I do hear it because the yeah. price tag never price normally tag. works and I, don't, I think he's going to get played 6 some games and 8 some games but I, hope, I really hope I'm wrong because yeah fairs that's, that's, that's a marky sign I, mm-hmm. I, I do like Declan Rice as a person a lot but yeah, as a player, I think he's a bit overrated. Fairs, so, yeah. bro. Fairs. Um, okay, to wrap it up, yeah. signing of the season. Rasmus Hoyland. Okay, I've got Tahif Chong at Luton. Yeah, I'm coming like I'm spotting United this episode. It's really annoying, <laughs> me. but I just think 72 mil investment, 64 mil initial fee, off of not enough sample size. That screams to me: we are certain this guy is the guy. And, and yeah, and I agree. And the problem with United has never been the scouts. Mm. The scouts have consistently found top players. Haaland, Bellingham, Casado, yeah. um, Ahmad consistently found top players. It's just the board and the manager being in line with the scouts. Yeah. So the scouts have obviously given the data to Ten Hag. He's looked at it and thought, bang, that's my guy. Yeah. Other than Kane, Haaland was his next choice. Yeah. Nah, I think. Don't know, man. Six three, fast. He's, he's that's the more the strike you need in the Prem now. Clearly, yeah. I think he's going to be it. And there's coach, there's coachable assets there, which a good coach like Ten Hag. You know, we've seen him with Rashford, with mm. other guys. We've seen Benny McCarthy's work with Rashford. He can he can touch up on that stuff with Holland with working his back to goal stuff. Yeah, his link up play. I think under the good coaching that United have, he can explode. I agree. I hope he doesn't though. But that's been it then. The Streets Won't Forget podcast, we're back. It's been good. Um, And yeah, if you've got to the end of this, please share, like, subscribe. And we'll be back possibly on Sunday reviewing the the Community Shield. See you next time. Thank you very much, guys. Take care.